Welcome back. It's Lee Cullen with Northcraft Analytics. Joined here by Paul Summerfield, Chief Technology Officer as well. We're going to be covering knowledge management analytics. First, I wanted to remind you to make sure you check out the Microsoft App Source. Our free solution for Test Drive is called Change Management Intelligence. I think you'll like it. It includes a forward schedule of changes. And we'll be releasing new solutions shortly. So make sure to check back often for those. Okay, now we're going to get started with knowledge management. Thanks, Lee. So one of the key issues I've seen IT departments face across the span of my career is the ability to record and maintain um, effective, proven information in some sort of knowledge base that allows you to resolve an incident in the quickest time possible. So I've seen teams use various methods to record information about the resolution of a of an incident, what they've done to resolve it, um, which is great. You know, you if you're recording uh, what you've done, that's that's a good start. But you know, Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, SharePoint attachments, or you know, even raising um, uh, change tickets or incident tickets within Remedy or ServiceNow to to record the information. I've seen all of those. Um, the the challenge is the indexing and searching of those articles with free text. So one of the challenges we face here is enabling our IT support staff to quickly and easily search and find information that will help them resolve the incident in the quickest time possible. And that information should be based upon uh, proven techniques and approaches by uh, qualified IT staff that has then been verified, hopefully, by other analysts as being successful in resolving the same or similar incidents. So utilizing a KCS methodology, a knowledge-centered service, for your knowledge management approach, you're going to want to measure many aspects of the data that is going in and coming out of your knowledge base. It could be uh, the number of articles created in the last week, month, quarter, year. Um, it could be who's utilizing those articles when they resolve an incident, who's not. How many of those articles are older than six months and they haven't been touched? They haven't been maintained? Um, how many individuals are actually creating articles? And how many of those articles are being used successfully and being given a, a thumbs up when they're used by others? So it's essential that your IT staff are embracing the knowledge management approach that you've defined and are incorporating it into your operational methodology and your culture. Uh, it has to be a part of your culture for it to be successful. Um, and a, a challenge with that is getting individuals to take the time to record information during or after an incident that uh, helps others resolve uh, similar incidents. And uh, even harder is to get them to maintain articles that uh, have been previously written and need updating. So how do we incentivize and reward our support staff for really embracing the knowledge management culture um, and making it an integral part of the way we support our IT systems? Uh, it's difficult, the carrot and stick um, you know, approaches uh, generally tend to err uh, towards the stick um, and a number of the metrics that we're gonna go through keep people on the straight and narrow, um, but uh, there are examples where a carrot will work. So Lee was telling me earlier about uh, an example of a, a Northcraft client called Genuine Parts who incentivized their analysts by paying them 50 cents per article um, where that article was deemed successful in resolving um, the, uh, the incident by a certain number of people. So talking about metrics, you'll see Lee building a basic dashboard here. It's pretty easy. This is uh, something that if you've implemented knowledge management via the standard tools out there, such as ServiceNow or Remedy, you'll have no problem replicating a very similar view, if not the same. So some of the aspects that Lee's showing you here are things such as things like a view of the average age of articles, uh, the average article age goal, if you want to set one to measure against, um, the uh, article views by day of week by product. Uh, so are we showing, um, are we seeing articles being created in batch? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? We're able to drill down into that and understand. Um, uh, then we're seeing uh, a view of the usage that Lee's going to expand on there. So another thing that uh, 
we find we can do with Northcraft is use our, um, our multi-dimensional approach to uh, combining or mashing up data between incident and knowledge. So uh, showing knowledge articles that are associated with incidents with problem tickets uh, that were successful in addressing those incidents and problem tickets. And that's uh, a unique feature of, of Northcraft that we bring to the table. So at the bottom of our dashboard, we always like to have a drill down view where we look at the specifics because data quality will be questioned. So we're going to show the uh, articles themselves, the technology they're associated to, the date they were created, etc. So you can see lead plugging in various categories here to our drill down. Uh, this works well with our view at the top. And uh, what he's showing here is uh, when our articles next need to be reviewed. So this has been a very basic knowledge dashboard, but you can see how useful this would be for managing your knowledge management space. Uh, so hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, and now we're gonna move on to some of the out of the box singularity content. So when we talk about quality, I mean, measurement of quality being one of the key core um, uh, objectives and, and uh, requirements for KCS, we obviously need to measure um, a number of different attributes, such as you know uh, maintenance um, uh, schedule, um, and but the quality itself and the feedback from peers and people who are using those articles mm -hmm. is is uh, is very important. And you've got an example, I think, of a previous client, right, who uh, who had a particular way of of rewarding and incentivizing mm -hmm. individuals, right? Yes, sir. yes, I do. That was genuine parts, um, and this was uh, probably early two thousands. There was a VP of accounting and information systems at the time. The two organizations were integrated. And uh, he came up with a way to incentivize the analysts by paying them 50 cents per usage of their article. So because the stores paid for support, he was able to achieve hard dollar savings through the creation of knowledge articles because there was revenue coming in from the stores, there was a chargeback process. So accounting and information systems were actually integrated in this, in this uh, organization. And I think he had a unique way of incentivizing um, through kind of micro incentives, um, better quality in the articles. So that idea inspired this dashboard where we could compare quality against you know, different analysts and authors, um, against the technologies. So this is one of our out-of-the-box pieces of singularity content. Um, I think first, you know, you saw the basic knowledge dashboard. We just created that ad hoc. Um, we have more on analyst comparison here. Um, this is one of our other pieces of out-of-the-box content. So you can compare the different analysts and the quality of those analysts. Um, at the end of the day, though, you know, the interesting thing is really there are only uh, carrots and sticks in yeah, management. Yeah. So this really is the last stage of maturity uh, uh, report view on um, uh, some of your key measures, KPIs that um, you want to see at a higher level in a, in a at a glance. Um, so, for instance, uh, knowledge management impact on mean time to repair. Um, you know which which severity of incident is. Um, utilizing knowledge management um, and then incidents not using KM. So uh, which teams, which individuals are still resolving incidents without the um, uh, going to the knowledge base first and, and um, feeding back into the process uh, and making sure those articles are maintained well and are of higher quality in, as they evolve. Um, savings, return on investment. So how do we know that uh, our uh, investment in um, knowledge management is actually paying back? So hours saved. Um, by, by analysts, how can they be, you know, focused on higher value work rather than, um, uh, again, in reinventing the wheel? And those dollars saved could be soft dollars internally, or they could be, for you know, your your example earlier, Lee from uh, from previous client, they could be hard dollars. Um, and then, uh, you know, some simple uh, visuals that allow you to say, okay, how much <laughs> how much do we actually save over X period? Um, uh, you know, in terms of investment in this process of procedure. Great, thanks. Yeah, so tying it all together. Using the unique advantages of our multidimensional architecture to cross these different process areas, which may be tables or entirely different data sources, to summarize into an executive view to provide business value. So, you know, looking at knowledge and its relationship to SLAs, to incident, to IT financial management, et cetera, creates a very powerful and simplified view 
that makes it easy to understand a business case for knowledge management, easy to communicate that to executives. Um, and so we really appreciate the time today. My listeners to us for knowledge management. We'll be back next week or the following with new content around some exciting new offerings that we have for you. We appreciate your time.